tennis is not the only thing I want in my life. I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of things. Things that are important, things that I shouldn't be missing out on. Daddy, I want to start dating. I'd like to maybe even have a boyfriend. Now, I know this wasn't in our plans, Daddy, but it's what normal girls my age do. And I want to be normal like the other girls. The last thing I would want to do is hurt you, so it's really important for you to tell me that it's okay. So what do you think, Daddy? Is it okay? I think you should go for it. Chad? Blow off tennis for a little while. You know, live a little. Enjoy life. Maybe to loosen you up. How dare you? How dare you sit there and pretend to be my father? If there's anyone pretending around here, that'd be you. Walking around here acting all high and mighty. Maybe it's time for you to stop pointing the finger at other people and check out your own miserable life. Mrs. Crane. Hello, what's wrong? Sam Bennett is downstairs. What? He's in the library with Mr. Crane. With Julian? Why? I'm not sure. I didn't see him myself. Lawrence the butler told me. <sighs> Sam. Mrs. Crane, no. You must be careful not to do anything that might reveal your feelings for him in the past or in the present. Okay. Open up your eyes now. <laughs> oh, Sam. It's a locket. Open it. Oh. So you'll never forget me. As if I ever could. Do you like it? I love it, and I'm gonna wear it forever. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it was just yesterday. But it happened a long time ago. You must remain strong. Listen to your mind, not your heart. Oh, what if I'm tired of doing that? You can't be. If certain people found out about your past with Sam, oh, it could destroy their lives. This is hard to get into, the Fort Knox. Ah, oh, this should do it. Officer Lopez Fitzgerald graduated with top honors in his class at the police academy. He's not only one of Harmony PD's finest officers, he's one of the finest men I've had the privilege to work with. And we're damn lucky to have him. So no, Mr. Crane, I will not fire Luis. Perhaps a reminder is in order here. I'm Julian Crane. Harmony is my town. I decide who our police department is lucky to have. The town of Harmony belongs to its citizens, not one man or one family. You're either trying to provoke me or you're very naive, and since you are the chief of police, I assume it's the former. Well, whatever works for you, Julian. But like I said before, Luis Lopez Fitzgerald is staying. That's out of the question. The man's had a string of run-ins with my sister Sheridan. It's only a matter of time before the media picks up on this case of harassment. I won't tolerate publicity. Well, that's between you and them. And nobody tells me how to run my police force. On second thought, you are naive. Don't you understand that if you don't give me what I want, the Harmony Police Department won't be yours much longer? I just thought of something. If Luis ever found out that his sister was working here for Ethan's mother, all of my fears about Teresa would disappear. What do you mean? Well, Luis would force Teresa to quit her job, and she would never have the chance to be near Ethan again. some papers at the cottage that I promised Ethan. I'll be back in a minute.
Are you threatening me, Julian? No, not at all. I'm just aware that your contract's up for renewal in a few months. Meaning I would be very happy to use my considerable influence with the review board to see that you're awarded a hefty pay raise and a long extension if you were to play ball with me. And if I don't? Then I'd have to be forced to suggest that your contract be terminated. That's blackmail. Now spare me the righteous indignation. We're both grown men here. We can discuss the facts of life without pussyfooting around. The fact is, Luis Lopez Fitzgerald does not deserve to lose his job. Your loyalty strikes me as being a might misdirected, Chief Bennett. Aren't you supposed to be the quintessential family man? I'm a devoted family man, that's right. And didn't I hear something about you adding your wife's orphan niece to your household recently? Yeah, she's just moved in, but oh, what my, does that happen? My, my, another mouth to feed on a not terribly remarkable salary. I'd think a pay hike for you would come in rather handy. Well, most people could use more money than they have. So I hear. And if I recall, my bank holds the mortgage on your home. I pay my bills on time every month. Bully for you, Chief Bennett. But I'm sure you've heard those horror stories of bookkeeping slip-ups. You know, checks getting lost in the mail. It's terrible what can happen to a person's credit rating with just the smallest oversight. I understand it could take years to unravel such a thing. You just don't get it, do you? No, I'm not going to fire Luis. And as far as your threats go, in order to have me removed as police chief, you'd have to prove that I was incompetent or at the very least use questionable judgment. The people in this town know better. Do they? Oh, yeah, they do. So if I were you, I'd get used to the fact that Luis is staying on Harmony's police force, and so am I. All the crane money, power, and threats will never change that. doing here? Who let you in? I'm here on police business. It's none of your concern. I'll be right back. Please, take your time. I want to talk to you. I can't believe what I just saw. You were actually going to let Louise catch Teresa, weren't you? Ivy, somehow, some way, someone is going to pick up on your feelings for Chief Bennett. And what if that someone is Ethan? No. Ethan can't ever know. He can't even suspect, which is... Why I've changed my mind about Ethan settling in harmony. I suggested that he move to Washington, D.C. instead. Washington? It'll mean him starting his political career earlier than we planned, but so what? At least it'll keep him away from harmony and Sam. In fact, I'm going to go talk to him about it again right now. Sorry it took me so long, darling. I... What do you have there? Oh, it's your locket. N no, I... What's wrong, Mother? My locket. Uh, what, you thought I broke it? It's fine, I'm just trying to open it. Well, no, it's just, it's... It's very delicate. I know, don't worry, I'm not gonna break it. It seems to be stuck. What's the trick? I really wouldn't know. You mean you never tried to open it even once? Never. You don't even know what's inside? No. Doesn't that drive you crazy not to know? I've never given it much thought. I've seen you wear this from time to time over the years, but you never told me where you got it. I can't even remember. Really? I was young when it was given to me, Ethan. All I know is it's been in my family for generations. The engravings are so intricate. I don't make things like this anymore. Well, perhaps that's why I'm so fond of it. I bet I can open it with this. Ethan, I wish you wouldn't. Mother, I'm not going to scratch it. I mean, if you're not curious about it, but I am. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe the picture inside is some long-lost relative we had no idea we were related to. Okay, my life is just fine. My life is great. Oh, so it is. 
That's why you uh, came crawling in here today to ask Daddy's permission to have a life like other girls, right? I, I wasn't crawling. I wasn't asking permission. I, I just came in here to discuss a personal family matter with my father. Oh. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, maybe you don't get it, but it's what civilized people do, okay? They communicate by talking to one another, not hanging out in pool halls and hitting each other when things don't go their way. Like I said, you don't know squat about my life. And you don't know anything about mine. Maybe I didn't before, but I do now. You see, when you thought you were bearing your soul to your old man, it reminded me of the lyrics of that uh, Smash Mouth song. You know, um, so much to do, so much to see. So why not take the back street? Because you'll never know if you don't go. And you'll never shine if you don't grow. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you live your life according to some stupid song lyric, okay? But mine's a little deeper than that. If you say so. But those words could have been written for you. Now, if I were you, I'd think long and hard about what street I wanted to walk down. The one your daddy wants you to, or the one you want to. Because you ain't happy with me. Not by a long shot. Now I got work to do. I'll see you later. I, I, I am ha I am happy. Hey, whatever you say. Where are you? I am trapped, Whitney. I am this close to Luis finding out I have a job here at the Crane Mansion. Oh, thanks to Gwen. You know I'm not one to give advice on love. One thing I do know is that jealousy never pays off. I... I just... I really... I just hate this ugly green-eyed monster part of myself. And until Teresa, I never even knew I had it. I'm sorry, Sheridan. Don't say you're sorry, Gwen. Just get over it. I mean, go upstairs and find Ethan. Pay attention to the way that he looks at you when he sees you. If my words can't convince you, then the love in his eyes should. Oh, you're right. business brings you here? Nothing that concerns you. Of course. So what big secretive case is Officer Lopez Fitzgerald investigating at the Crane Estate today? Wait, don't, don't tell me. Let me guess. You got an anonymous tip that someone in my family was caught jaywalking. Or was it an unpaid parking ticket? Like I said, it's none of your business, Sheridan. <sighs> Forget it, Luis. You're on my territory now. I can bug the heck out of you all I want. I know what you're doing here. Someone put a can to be recycled in the regular trash. <gasps> I confess it was me. P give me the cuffs. Read me my rights. Lay off, will you? <laughs> Not until you tell me what you're doing in my family's house. The mayor had a talk with your brother about our little run-in last night. What? Julian summoned me and Chief Bennett here this morning. You're kidding. Hardly. I don't understand. I told the mayor what happened. It was Halloween that I accidentally threw the pie at you thinking you were Hank. He was fine with it. It was all fine. Is that how it's supposed to work when you're crane? You just snap your fingers and your problems disappear. Well, I suggest that you work on your finger snapping. Because your brother seems to do it a lot better than you. I suppose Julian has Chief Bennett in his library. Yeah. They asked me to leave while they hash out my fate. Well, they might be able to shut you out, but they can't do that to me. Leave it alone, Sheridan. And I'll take whatever punishment is dished out to me. You know what? Newsflash, Luis. This is not about you anymore. This is about me and my brother. How dare he override something that I already made a decision on? Well, then I guess he just saw it a different way than you did. Well, then 
I'll make him see it the same way. Right now. <laughs> Sheridan. I'm wearying of this conversation. I want you to go out and fire Lopez Fitzgerald right now. I've already told you. It's not going to happen. So if you're finished saying what you got to say, I have a police force to run. You'll fire him right now, and that's the last I want to hear of it. Chief Bennett isn't going to fire anyone, Julian. And I'm going to make sure of it. You should have seen the look on her face, Whitney. She wanted me to get busted by Luis, which only proves what I've been saying. Gwen knows I am a threat to her and Ethan's relationship. Well, I think that's kind of a leap, Teresa. I mean, Ethan ordered her an engagement ring. Oh, so he ordered it. But he hasn't given it to her yet. I think now that Ethan's getting to know me, he's not sure what he's going to do. How can you be dreaming about a future with Ethan when Luis could still be in that house? How are you going to escape? Oh... I still haven't figured that out yet. Well, if Louise catches you, you're going to be dreaming all new dreams while you're mopping floors in the convent school that he sends you off to. <sighs> Excuse us, Sheridan. This is a private meeting between Chief Bennett and myself. Oh, I have every right to be here, Julian, since the subject of your meeting does concern me. I take it Louise went running to you for help. Well, not at all. But I did get him to tell me why he and Chief Bennett were called here by you. You have no right to interfere, Julian. I have every right. I talked to the mayor last night. The situation was taken care of. You had absolutely no reason to get involved. I'm ordering you to leave right now. Oh, I bet you wish that I would just disappear into thin air, don't you? What would you have me do, Julian? Book the next flight to Paris? I see. You wish I had never come back from Europe in the first place. That's enough? When is anything ever enough for you, Julian? What, does my presence embarrass you? Am I to be banished now because this is a men's business and I'm a woman? I am well aware that in our family, the rights of leadership are reserved for the firstborn sons. But you know... I've always disagreed with the wisdom of that, especially in this generation, because look where it's gotten us. Forgive me, Chief Bennett. I was always raised to never air the soiled family linens in front of outsiders. But I'm afraid that my brother overreacted when he talked to the mayor. I most certainly did not. If you had any idea of what actually transpired last night, you would not be hounding Officer Lopez Fitzgerald and Chief Bennett. The officer did nothing wrong. The entire incident was my fault. I'm so disappointed that my own sister has allied herself against me and against the family. I'm certain father will be equally as disappointed Perhaps even more so than I. Struck a nerve, sister. Almost got it. Ethan, please. I... Mother, will you relax? I'm not going to break it. And you'll be glad once I open it, you'll be able to see the picture inside. I mean, who knows? We could be on the verge of uncovering some ancient family secret. <laughs> Ethan. Oh, hey, sweetheart. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but could I steal you away from your mother for a bit? Of course, dear. Steal him away for as long as you like. Oh, I wish I could, but I'm off to a charity lunch, and I was just hoping to have a few minutes with Ethan before I left. Oh, I totally understand. Of course. Go off. Have a, have a good time. Enjoy yourselves. I'll see you later. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to try to open it after Gwen leaves. I would rather it stay here. I'll promise I'll give it back to you after I open it. You know, I'm beginning to think there's something you're trying to hide. <laughs> Nonsense. It's just I am very, very fond of it. Can't believe it. I don't know what
what to say. Oh, my God, I can't believe this has happened. I... Me too. I'm sorry. I was trying to be more careful. What? I broke the chain. This isn't the original chain that came with the locket, is it? No. Oh. No, it's not. I'm glad for that, at least. The locket seems all right. I'm sorry, Mother. It's, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, why don't you just go enjoy some time with Gwen before she has to leave? No, I'm starving. You mind if we go down to the kitchen and grab a bite to eat? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Sam Bennett could still be downstairs. Oh, why waste your precious time with Gwen in the kitchen, surrounded by the staff? Why don't you just take her to your room and call Cook and have them send something up? Um, you can use the privacy to discuss setting a date for that certain occasion. What occasion could you mean, Mother? Oh, take him away, Gwen. <laughs> oh, Ethan, you might ask Gwen how she feels about Washington. Washington? <laughs> You were seconds away from disaster. But nothing happened, Pilar. Oh, but it could have. If Ethan had seen Sam Bennett's picture in that locket, it would have torn this family into so many pieces, it couldn't ever be put back together again. You thought you were pouring out your heart to your father? Ugh, and it turned out to be Chad. That is the worst thing I have ever heard of in my life, Whitney. Ugh. Out of all the people in the whole world, Teresa, I could have died. And you should have seen the smug look on his face, Teresa. And he had the nerve to tell me that I wasn't happy and that I never would be until I started walking down my own street or whatever instead of my father's. <sighs> or some garbage like that. Teresa, are you still there? What if Chad was right? Oh, I don't believe it. N now you're going to gang up on me, too. I am not ganging up, Whitney. I am your best friend. But be honest, you did go to talk to your father because you felt something was missing from your life. That tennis wasn't enough. You even told me that. Well, you know, I, I changed my mind. I am so glad that my father wasn't here because I don't even feel that way at all. But I thought you did. No, no. Tennis is my dream. It always has been since I was a little girl. I've been working towards the day I play at Wimbledon. Nothing, nothing's changed. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. And after being around a jerk like Chad, <laughs> I'm more sure than ever. I'm not missing out on a thing, not going out with guys. <sighs> Tennis is enough for me. Well, if you really mean that, then fine. I just want you to be happy, Whitney. I know. Same here. Well, I better check to see if the coast is clear yet. Later. Later. And be careful, Teresa, okay? I am going to play at Wimbledon someday, Daddy. Just like... Just like I've always wanted to. Nothing's going to get in my way. I hope your dreams do come true. If they're really your dreams. So where were you this morning? I went to go see Sheridan in her cottage. Talking to her always helps me feel better when I'm a little, you know. You were still upset about my dancing with Teresa last night. I was, but I'm okay now. I hope so. I mean, what do I have to do to convince you that nobody, including Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald, is a threat to our relationship? That I love you, Gwen? Prove it. How? I consider myself a pretty liberated woman, Ethan, but I'm old-fashioned when it comes to one thing. Marriage proposals. Gwen. No. Ethan, you proposed to me once before, and I was foolish enough to say no. But I doubted your reasons at the time. And what about now? Now I'm ready for you to ask me again. And maybe I'm taking all the suspense out of it, but I need you to understand that the next time you do propose to me, I don't plan on turning you down. Why are you smiling? Oh, 
Oh, you're up to something, Ethan Crane. What is it? Cat got your tongue, sister dearest? Or did the mention of our father Alistair remind you you have certain obligations as a crane? I'm not afraid of what our father would say. In fact, he should be proud of me that I stood in the way of an innocent man losing his job. <laughs> Who are you kidding, Sheridan? <laughs> in any case, the matter still doesn't concern you. I've ordered the chief to fire the officer in question. That's the end of it. And I told Excuse you... Excuse me, I... Chief Bennett, but I'm afraid my brother doesn't understand exactly how serious I am. If you don't back down on this, then I'm going to go to our enemies in the media. You were Oh, I bet they would just love to jump on a story about the almighty powerful cranes bullying a trusted public servant out of his livelihood. You will not go to the media with this. Do you hear me? Now you've struck a nerve, Julian. You are being an alarmist, Pilar. Haven't I always handled the situation with complete discretion? Until recently, yes. But lately, you've been tempting fate in a way you never would have before. Let's not be melodramatic, shall we? Ivy, even as we speak, Sam Bennett is in this house, and so is Ethan. They're not going to see each other. Last week, you invited Chief Bennett and his wife to dinner here. And you said you planned to do it again. What if Ethan is home that night? You can't keep them from running into each other forever. They have already met, and the world didn't come to an end, Pilar. Yes, it's true, they barely know each other. But what if they were to spend any time together? Who knows what might happen? Stop worrying. I will just make sure that that doesn't happen. I want to believe you, Mrs. Crane. I do. But sometimes I get the feeling that you're like this moth that is flying too close to the flame. I mean, you know it's dangerous, but you just can't help yourself. If Ethan had opened up your locket just now, your most closely guarded secret would have blown up in your face. Why are you smiling? I'm smiling because you're so incredibly sweet and earnest about this marriage proposal business. Well, it's just something I've done a little thinking about. If you haven't, Of course I... I've been thinking about it, Gwen. I'm gonna propose to you. The question you should be asking is when? And only I know the answer to that. Don't tell me. What, and, and ruin the surprise? No way. Besides, it gives me something to hold over your head. You're enjoying torturing me, aren't you? Well, I prefer to think of it as heightening the anticipation. It could happen at any time. Just waiting for one more item. What? A ring? See? I've already said too much. Not another word. You're torturing me and you love it. Now, think of it this way. You know Christmas is coming every year. But what would it be like if you didn't know the exact day it fell on? Not only would you get a ton of gifts, but you would also get the thrill of being surprised. You're crazy, you know that. <laughs> yes? Uh, Ethan, would you uh, come downstairs? There's something I'd like to run by you. Sure. I'll be right down. <sighs> well... I had to cut this short, but I'm being summoned by the old man. That's okay. I have to leave anyway. Well, I'll walk you down. Don't bother. I can see myself out. You feel better? Much. That's good. Because our day is coming soon, and nothing's going to stop us from having a wonderful life together. Ethan will be down in a moment. Then wouldn't you like to answer my question before he gets here, Julian? You're not serious about going to the media? Oh, watch me. Or we can forget all about this if you'll just rescind your order to Chief Bennett about firing Officer Lopez Fitzgerald. I take it you're reconsidering. The officer can keep his job? I'll assume that's a yes. It was nice to see you again, Chief Bennett. Nice seeing you, too. And thank you for taking the responsibility for the incident with Luis last night. 
Why wouldn't I? It was my fault. I know. That's why I didn't fire him. As long as I'm police chief in this town, no one's going to tell me how to run my police department. But I appreciate the help. Anytime. Congratulations, Chief Bennett. You won this round. I must insist that you keep Luis away from my sister from now on. Or perhaps you've forgotten. But your sister still has to do community service with Luis Lopez Fitzgerald at the youth center. That'll be over shortly when it is. If the officer so much as sees Sheridan coming down the street, he's to cross to the other side. I can assure you, Julian, that Sheridan is the last person Luis wants to run into. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, and uh, in spite of what you and Sheridan seem to think, Harmony is my town. I will do with it as I please. You're off the hook. My brother was so afraid of the media getting wind of anything to do with our family that he backed off immediately. Hmm. Well, say something. But have a nice day. I don't believe you. But aren't you the least bit grateful that I went to bat for you with my own brother? You did the right thing. What do you think you deserve a medal? Yeah, I don't want a damn medal, but I wouldn't mind a civil thank you. Well, you know, don't get me wrong. I heard you in there with your brother. I have to admit, I was pretty impressed. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. You know, but if you'd been at the youth center chaperoning the dance like you should have been, instead of goofing off with Heg, none of this would have happened in the first place. You know, that pie didn't get all over me by itself. You know what? On second thought, I don't want to thank you from you. In fact, next time, I am going to stay out of it. Just like you wanted me to. Do it. And while you're at it, stay out of my life. You've got it. Luis, why were you so hard on her? I mean, she really took a hit for this one. All right, I mean, she really tried to make things right for you. Yeah, only she wasn't doing it for me. She's doing it for herself. She's just trying to one-up her brother. Well, I'm not so sure what her motives are. But, I mean, even if you're right, I mean, would it have killed you to say thank you? I'm not going to thank any of the Cranes. Not till I get some sort of explanation about my father's disappearance. C that was years ago. Look, I'm not going to get anywhere with you on this one. But just so you know, the job's not on the line anymore. Thanks, so. One thing I had to give in on, though, you're to avoid Sheridan Crane completely once she serves out of community service. Man, what a blow. Yeah, I told Julian that wouldn't be a problem. Are you kidding? That's a bonus. Get back on duty, Luis. I'm on my way. Why are you going, are you going the back way? Well, I'm sure the Cranes don't let my mommy use the front door. So as long as she uses the back way, so will I. Chief, there's one more thing I'd like to discuss with you. Playing tennis is my dream. And thank you so much for reminding me. Hey, anything I can do to help out. There is one thing that you could do for me. Name it. Keep what I said to yourself. You know, I was just upset, you know, blown off steam. I didn't mean any of those things I said, and, and I wouldn't want to upset my father for no reason. Relax. Look, I ain't no snitch. I wouldn't have said anything to your old man anyway. But you're a fool if you don't tell him how you really feel yourself. Why would I tell him something that isn't true? Like, like I said, I wasn't thinking when I said those things. That's all. And now you realize that tennis is the most important thing in your life. Blah, blah, blah. It is. And, you know, I don't care what you think. I am happy to make whatever sacrifices I have to to make my dreams come true. You'll never know if you don't go. You'll never shine if you don't grow.
I have no intention of anyone finding out about my past with Sam. That will remain a secret, no matter what I have to do. But what if Ethan and Sam were to spend any time together? Your son is a very perceptive young man. What if he picks up on something? He won't have the opportunity, Pilar. Perhaps it wasn't so difficult when he was young. You were able to keep him away from Harmony and Sam Bennett by sending him to boarding school during the year and to Europe in the summers. But he's a grown man now, and he's home. Not for long, Pilar. That's why I'm pushing him to move to Washington, D.C. At least if he's there, I won't have to worry about him running into Sam and... I've got to go. I'm late for an appointment. I pray she knows what she's doing. Too many lives would be turned upside down if her secret were to come out. What is it now, Mr. Crane? Well, I haven't had a chance to, to run this by Ethan yet, but I'm hoping he'll become more involved with the family responsibilities here in Harmony. I'd like that. I, uh, I'm just not sure where I'll be living. If you're referring to your mother's foolish idea about you rushing off to Washington, there'll be plenty of time for that. I want to make you the new liaison between the police department and Crane Industries. You've never mentioned that. Well, it just came to me. Uh, basically, it entails your sitting on the police board and being... Chief Bennett's direct tie to anything having to do with the Crane family or our interests. What do you say? Well, it sounds fine with me. Chief Bennett? Ethan strikes me as a young man with integrity and honor. You must be very proud to have such a fine young son, Julian. Yes, I am. Well, I have no problem with the idea. Excellent. So why don't you two go over exactly what Ethan's role is going to be? After all, you be working closely together from now on. What the Mother? hell? Mother? Are you alright? I don't know. What do you think, Cap? He's faint? Mother? Louise. Teresa, what the hell are you doing here? 